Hello grade 10 learners! Have a nice day! Welcome back to my channel! For today's video, I'll be discussing to you about polynomial function. After watching this video, you will be able to answer the following questions. First, how to determine a polynomial function? Second, how to write polynomial function in standard form? Third, how to determine the degree, leading term, leading coefficient, and constant term of a polynomial function? And last, how to solve word problems involving polynomial function. Okay, now let us describe first about polynomial function. Let p of x is equal to a sub n x to the power of n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 x to the power of n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub 1 x plus a sub 0 or a sub n is not equal to 0 where n is a non-negative integer and a sub 0, a sub 1, dot, 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 a sub n are real numbers called coefficients. a sub n, x to the power of n, this one, is the leading term. Or a sub n is the leading coefficient and a sub 0 is the constant term. In other words, this is the polynomial function in standard form. The terms are arranged in descending order. Okay, we will discuss further in the next slide. Now, let us try to determine first whether the given function is polynomial or not. Remember that the exponent of polynomial function is positive integers. Okay, number one f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus x squared plus 6x minus 10. Okay, this is the f function. The value of f of x depends upon the value of x. This can be also y. In other words, this is the dependent variable and our x here is the independent variable. Okay, now let's try to check the exponents. So, all the exponents are positive. Therefore, example number one is polynomial function. Number two, okay, this is also a polynomial function. y is equal to 2 minus x square root of 5. But if the given is y is equal to 5 square root of x, Okay, the variable x is inside the radical sign, then this is not an example of polynomial function. But for number two, this is polynomial function. Number three, okay, if you have observed, number three, the exponents are, we, the first exponent is negative three. And the second exponent is square root of 2. This is not a polynomial function because the exponent is negative and here we have a rational number. Number 4, y is equal to 5x minus 1. This is polynomial function. Number 5, f of x is equal to 5x to the power of 1 half minus 4x plus 1. Okay, this is not polynomial function because of the exponent 1 half. Number 6, y is equal to 4 over x squared plus 3x minus 1. Okay, we have here x squared in our denominator. So, this is not polynomial function because we cannot have a variable in the denominator. Number 7, y is equal to 2x cubed over 3 plus 15x plus 5 over 3. Okay, this is polynomial function. We can have a constant term that is a fraction as well as the leading coefficient that is a fraction. Now we're going to write the polynomial function in standard form. 
Okay, for number 1, f of x is equal to 3x plus 5x cubed minus 4x squared minus 10. In writing the polynomial function in standard form, we have to arrange the term according to its degree. Talking about degree, we are referring to the exponent of the variable. So, in here we have to write 5x cubed first because 5x cubed has a degree of 3. Next, negative 4x squared because the degree of negative 4x squared is 2. Then we have 3x. The degree of 3x is 1. And last is negative 10. The degree of negative 10 is 0. So this is now the standard form. Always remember that you are not going to change the sign. You have also to copy the sign. Just rearrange the term starting with a term with the highest degree. Now, talking about the degree of this polynomial function, we have to consider only the degree of the highest term. So therefore, our degree here is 3. Okay, do not add the degree of its term. Next, for the leading term, from the word lead, that is coming from the first term in the polynomial function in standard form. Okay, we have it here. Next, for our leading coefficient, we have to base it to the numerical coefficient in the leading term. So, we have 5. And last for constant term, this is the last term in the standard form that has no variable. That is the constant term. Okay. For number 2, g of x is equal to 5x squared minus x to the power of 4 minus 3x plus 7. So, again, we have to rearrange the term, starting the term with the highest degree. So, that's why we have here g of x, so we have to write first negative x to the power of 4 with a degree of 4 next. 5x squared, the degree is 2. Next, negative 3x, the degree is 1. And the last is 7, the degree is 0. Talking about the degree, we have here 4 that is coming from the degree of the first term in standard form. And for our leading term, it's negative x to the power of 4. It's coming from here. The first term in the standard form. And of course, for our leading coefficient, we have negative 1 that is coming from the coefficient of negative x to the power of 4. Though it's you do not see negative 1, but it's understood that it has a numerical coefficient of negative 1. Okay, next for the constant term, so we have here 7. That is the constant term. Number 3, h of x is equal to negative 3x, so we only have one term. So this is already in standard form, we just copy. Now for our degree, we have 1. Because the exponent of x is only 1. And of course, the leading term is also negative 3x. For our leading coefficient, we have negative 3. For our constant term, we do not have a constant term here. So we have to write 0. Now we are going to solve word problems involving function. Okay, number one. A demographer predicts that the population t of a town t years from now can be modeled by the function t of t is equal to 10,000 plus 150t plus 400t squared minus 3t to the power of 4 plus 5t to the power of 5. What will be the population of a town 10 years from now? 
So, meaning to say we are going to evaluate this function where t is equal to 10. Okay? So, just copy the function. No need to re rewrite this in standard form. Okay, next. We have to substitute, substitute our t with 10. Okay? So this 10 is coming from this because we are asked to find the population of a town 10 years from now. Then we have to simplify. So 10,000, we have 150 times 10, 400 times 10 squared minus 3 times 10 to the power of 4 plus 5 times 10 to the power of 5. In other words, the variable t will be substituted by 10. Simplify further, so 10,000, bring down 150 times 10 is 1,500. 400 times 100, 100 is coming from 10 squared. And then 10 to the power of 4, that is equal to 10,000. Okay? 10 to the power of 5, that is 100,000. So we have to simplify first term inside the parenthesis. Okay, so we have 10,000, bring down 1,500, bring down also 400 times 100, that is equal to 40,000. Minus 3 times 10,000, that is 30,000, plus 5 times 100,000 is 500,000. Now, we are going to add. So we have 10,000 plus 1,500 plus 40,000 minus 30,000 plus 500,000. The answer is 521,500. So therefore, the population after 10 years is 521,500. Another example. Mark scores a final exam by starting with a score of 250 points and subtracting 5 points for each incorrect answer. What will be his score if he misses 4 questions? If he answers 9 incorrect questions, will he receive a score of 205 points? Okay, for our solution, we can represent x as the number of incorrect answer. S of x, that is the score of mark in the exam. So our function here is s of x is equal to 250. We have here 250 minus 5x. For coming from this phrase, 250 points and subtracting by 5 points for each incorrect answer. Okay. So when x is equal to 4, that is the time when he misses 4 questions. So, our function will become s of x is equal to 50 minus 5x, substitute x by 4. So, we have to evaluate this one. Bring down to 50, 5 times 4 is equal to 20. 250 minus 20 is equal to 230. So, this is the score of Mark when he misses 4 questions. Now, what will be his score if he answers 9 incorrect questions? This is the time when x is equal to 9. Okay? So s of x is equal to 50 minus 5x. Substitute x by 9. So 250, 5 times 9 is 45. 250 minus 45, the answer is 205. Therefore, he will receive a score of 205 points if he answers 9 incorrect questions. So for our conclusion, therefore, Mark's score is 230 if he misses 4 questions, while he received a score of 205 points if he answers 9 incorrect questions. Another problem, 
rectangular box is 20 inches long, 8 inches wide, and 14 inches high. If each dimension is increased by x in inches, write a polynomial function in standard form modeling the volume V of the box. So, from the problem are given are the following. We have here the length. 20 inches, the width is 8 inches, and the height is 14 inches. Once the dimension is increased by x, this will become 20 plus x, 8 plus x, 14 plus x. Remember that the formula in finding the volume of a rectangular box is equal to LWH, or length times width times height. Now let's solve for the volume. Okay, let's substitute. Length is 20 plus x. Width is 8 plus x. While the height is 14 plus x. We will multiply. We will multiply first 20 plus x by 8 plus x. We will be using the FOIL method. So, 20 times 8 is 160. 20 times x is 20x x times 8, 8x, x times x is x squared. Just bring down 14 plus x. Combine similar terms. So we have here 160. 20x plus 8x is 28x. Bring down x squared. Bring down also quantity of 14 plus x. And this will be multiplied to 14 plus x. 160 times 14 is 2,140. 160 times x is 160x, 28x times 14 is 392x, 28x times x is 28x squared. Next, x squared times 14 is 14x squared, x squared times x is x cubed. Now, combine similar terms. So, 2,240 just bring down. We will combine 160x plus 392x, and the sum is 552x. We can also combine 28x squared plus 14x squared. The sum is 42x squared. Bring down x cubed. This is now the volume, but we are not through. We have to arrange this one in standard form, starting a term with the highest degree. So, we have x cubed plus 42x squared plus 552x plus 2240. So this is now the volume of the box. Okay. Thank you so much for watching guys, kindly like and if you have questions regarding the video, kindly write it in the comment box. Kindly share also to other students for them to learn or master the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications. Before I end, let me share to you one of the verses from the Bible. For I the Lord a God will hold their right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Isaiah 41 verse 13. That's all for today, and God bless you all.